Friday evening, in the heart of Paris, you'd think you were in front of a concert venue. How many are you? Good evening, gentlemen. How many are you? Nine people. In fact, we're queuing up to eat. Good evening. How many are you? Sajid Jelaholu, 42, is the maitre d' of this venue. Here, you can't book a table after 7.30 in the evening. Customers can wait up to 40 minutes. Good evening, four people. Five minutes, I'll get everyone settled in, okay? There, very good, okay. People line up for this magnificent setting, Art Nouveau style from the 1900s. Three here, guys, three. Three, three, three. On the table at four here. But also for what's on the plate. Bouillon Julien's motto, beautiful, good, and cheap. Very basic, traditional French cuisine. Egg mayonnaise for three and a half euros, leeks with vinaigrette for 380. Veal head for 1080. Average lunchtime bill, 17 euros. 24 in the evening, starter, main course, dessert and wine. Half the price of a classic brasserie. There'll be eight there, boys, guys, eight. For the formula to work, the 170 seats have to be filled. So Sajid, the restaurant's top man. All right, did they come? No, we're going to break the table. But the problem is... Turns tables up to three courses a night. A war machine. Whose birthday is it? Is it you? How old are you? 30? A well-honed technique for fitting in customers, but also to get them to leave. Sajid does up to 800 covers a day. With a gesture, we make it clear that people waiting. You have to clear the space and everything. We make them understand. But with gestures. But they have to go. Exactly. Customers know they'll be under a bit of pressure, but the atmosphere is relaxed. With Sajid and all his waiters as room entertainers, that's the spirit of Bouillon too. Striped shirt over there. That's the spirit of Bouillon too. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Le Bouillon is a convivial canteen, a melting pot of generations and social classes, and an invitation to go back in time. Edith Piaf frequented the establishment in the 50s. She had her own legendary table, number 24, now an icon. This is Edith Piaf's table, you know, the one that sings Non Rien de Rien. Well, that's her. Well, she ate where you are seated. Here you go. Personally, I'm Belgian, so that means I'll get the full Parisian experience. So what does the place, the setting evoke in you? It's like stepping back in time to the 20s, but in 2021, it's pretty cool. Like this establishment, Parisian bouillon are back in vogue. Young people are crazy about them, attracted by the low prices. Inspired by the model of the famous Maison Chartier, bouillon are springing up like mushrooms. The latest opened a month ago in place of an Alsatian brasserie. The concept is the same everywhere, to offer popular cuisine for modest prices, usually in historic settings. But how can you do good and cheap food? Nothing is left to chance in the bouillon business model. At Bouillon Julien, profitability begins at dawn. As soon as the fresh products arrive, We'll start by removing the plastic. Every morning, Christophe Moisan, the restaurant's chef, makes sure he hasn't been cheated by his wholesalers on quantities. Most of the fruit and vegetables come from small producers only 200 kilometers around Paris. Here we go. Leeks. I think I ordered 40 kilos of leeks. One, two, three, four cases. 
They look good this morning too. They're all the same size, which is great. In fact, what I'm doing here is quality control. And there's nothing missing compared to the order. Then, downstairs, we weigh a few products. We don't weigh everything because we don't have much time. But the reason why we also weigh the products is to show the suppliers that we're in control. If, for example, a kilo of leeks is missing every day, at the end of the year, 300 kilos of leeks is a lot. Not a penny must be lost if we are to offer attractive a la carte prices while maintaining a certain level of quality. Four, eight, twelve, that's what I ordered yesterday. The tomatoes are really nice and everything. When you see the stem like that sticking up, it means they're fresh. It's a guarantee of quality. If the stem falls, it means they've been picked for a long time. Fruit, vegetables, meat, fish. The merchandise never stays in cold storage for more than 48 hours. There's virtually no waste here. Everything is streamlined. Bouillon is all about low prices, right? So with low prices, you win on quantity, on volume. That's what's important. So if we have a loss, if we're missing something, that's where we lose out. It's the volume that makes the establishment profitable. The grill always heats up more at the top. So the first ones up there are always more marked than those down below. Christoph arrived here three years ago. After 17 years as head chef of a Michelin-starred Parisian restaurant, he used to make lobster. Today it's deviled eggs. A new world and a new technique which he's taking as a challenge. I wanted to try something different. It's the big brasseries, the bouillons. Afterwards, they're going to say, yeah, he's gone down market, lowered his standards and all that. No, I'm happy as I am. Doing so much volume. Today, we may do over 800 covers, but I'm not getting any plates sent back. Customers are happy. Under Christoph's command, a brigade of 11 cooks, all multi-skilled, able to go from roasted potatoes to choux pastry. Le Bouillon thus saves the pastry chef's salary, which is higher than that of an ordinary cook. Everything is made on site and preheated three hours in advance so that it can be served faster in the dining room. And above all, to keep costs under control, every ingredient is measured to the gram, like these fish fillets. In terms of profitability, when we draw up a technical sheet, the portion has to be between 125 and 140 grams. Here, it's 141 grams. The same goes for the bouillon recipe, the restaurant's signature dish. So here, I put 66 grams, 65 grams of frigola, 25 grams of carrots, then I add the meat, and then I go up to about 100 grams, 120 grams, and then, when it's time to serve, we reheat the plate. All that's left to do is pour the hot broth over the plate. We know that the plate costs us so much when we do it this way. So we know it costs us so much, so we sell it so much. So there are no surprises. An economic logic at the very origin of the recipe's creation. Because broth is first and foremost a meal for the poor. In the 1,850s, a butcher offered workers at Le Hal a unique, hearty and inexpensive dish based on low-quality cuts of meat such as oxtail or beef cheek, which had been abandoned by the bourgeoisie and cooked in hot water. The Chartier brothers picked up the concept. At the beginning of the 20th century, Le Bouillon restaurants became trendy, and that's where everyone had to be. In Paris, Bouillon were the place to be. It was a setting, an atmosphere, inexpensive cuisine. So people liked to meet up, and it became more famous. And after that, it's history. It was this spirit that Jean-Noël Dron discovered when he bought the Bouillon. Nearly three million euros in 2018. He has an appointment with John Whelan, the English architect who supervised the renovation, to check if it's aging well. You can see the yellowed color. Owner of 16 restaurants in France, Jean-Noël fell in love with this Art Nouveau location, listed as a historic monument. Julien, since the 70s, it's been a brasserie with a luxury brasserie model. So that's what we had in mind when we entered this institution. But when we discovered the specific history of Bouillon Julien, it became obvious that we had to do it again, simply as they had done back then. Opened in 1906, Le Bouillon was one of the finest restaurants in Paris. Bought out by the company Flo in the 70s, the establishment has lost some of its spark. The walls are getting darker with cigarette smoke. The menu is too expensive for this working class neighborhood. 
In 2018, Jean Noël invested 700,000 euros in the reburbishment. The bouillon will be restored to its original color and shine. We scraped the wall and revealed all the layers of paint over the years. At the very bottom was Celadon green. Celadon is a type of oriental pottery made in Korea, Japan, and China. Art Nouveau designers in Paris and Nancy were obsessed with orientalism. The bright pop color of Celadon green revived the establishment. The place is back on trend. The canteen spirit contributes a lot to it. Embodied by the good humor of Francois Paris, the 57-year-old head waiter at lunchtime. Does that suit you? Yes, perfect. Beautiful table under the glass roof. Enjoy your meal. This figure of the house is paid 3,000 euros after tax per month. What a pleasure to be here. Happy for you to be here too. In front of you, madam, or in front of you, sir? You, madam, I knew that. And a calf's head. A calf's head velouté. Thank you and bon appétit. We've known each other for about 20 years, so he's part of the family. It's a big family, so... And Francois knows what he's doing even when it comes to breaking bad news. That day, one of the restaurant's best sellers was out of stock. Excuse me, I've got a little problem. With the calf's head, there's none left, so... I just had a small problem. It'll be taken care of. If there's anything else you'd like, no problem. I'll give you a hug. I'll give you a hug, ma'am, after. Don't worry about a thing. What's the technique to make them swallow the pill? Well, the smile, the smile. You can't see it too well with the mask, but then the eyes, my eyes betray me, so there's no problem. Well, it'll give you a chance to come back. At noon, the doors open. It's a play, actually. We just walk on stage, so we do the show. Can the surfer look bother? No, not at all. We have to stay natural. If we were at Fouquet's or the Carlton, it would be a problem. And then from the moment we... We work in a bouillon, a local restaurant, there's no problem. But Francois has not forgotten the bouillon's tight business model. My lord, your highness, have you chosen? Ah, oh, well, when we're called like this... Bernard, would you mind if I brought you a pine tree? Because, my lord, okay, that's the way it's done. The pine tree, in fact, is a free cup. It's to differentiate it from a cremant that the customer pays, so that the bartender realizes that uh, we don't give the... so that he knows the difference, quite simply. Is that code between you? Yes, it's a code, it's a code, yes. A tad below, though. Way off, even. Yes, way less. A tad below, yes. Here, making small savings is a constant challenge, particularly at each the menu changes four times a year. On this particular day, between services, Jean Noël and Chef Christophe are meeting with restaurant manager Pascal Lebian to draw up the next Christmas menu three months in advance. We're going to redetermine Christophe's offer. We have all the material costs and theoretical selling prices. I'll be rolling out the starters. We've planned eight, the menus. They will validate the dishes according to their profitability. The aim is to stick to the rule of good value for money, even for a Christmas Eve menu. It's a different kind of offer. Avocado, crab meat, cocktail sauce, duck foie gras. It's so festive, you need one. Salmon duo, roulette, and smoked salmon. Binnies and assiduous cream, so it's all the same. We've got it under control. Scallop tartar in shell, vinaigrette. We're downgrading the margin a little here. Degrading means reducing the restaurant's margin. With truffle oil. Scallops are really a seasonal product, a festive product. It's a seasonal product, even if we're getting a little worse for wear. 
It's just that the price for us can't be right. We need to manage the costs, and that's the material price, obviously. But at the end of the day, it has to remain a very affordable price, a stock price. In concrete terms, to make any sense, we'd have to raise the price by three euros, but that would mean a starter at 15 euros, which is no longer a bouillon rate. For the moment, they're planning to sell Christmas scallops at 12 euros. There's one starter we're a bit stuck on, but there are seven others on which we're doing pretty well. So we won't be selling just scallops that evening either. So with the balance of our other sales, we'll be able to smooth out this margin, which is a little down. Demonstration of their economic logic with two of their emblematic desserts. The show Chantilly, sold for 2 euros 90, and the Tarto Citron, 6 euros. Bouillon makes money with the former, hardly at all with the latter. But here, it doesn't matter. We have one that costs us 63 cents. This one costs us 1 euro 30. The production cost of a Chou Chantilly is much lower than the lemon tart because then you have to make the dough, so there's butter. In the lemon curd, well, there's lemon, but it's expensive, so you have to extract the juice. There's also butter and cream, so all that costs a lot more. It's the communicating basis principle. We have products with slightly lower margins and products with slightly higher margins, and it's the average of the two that brings us to the margin we've targeted. So you have to sell a lot of cabbage to make up for the low margin on the lemon tart. Shonoe, what you've been doing for a while now is when a... It's a trade. We negotiate to the dime. We negotiate to the dime. Um, it's a gradual process, but in the end it's interesting because it's busy, because there's renewal, because it's bubbling. It's the 800 covers a day that make him money. Over 200,000 euros in profits on 4 million euros in sales in 2009, excluding Covid. That's at the top end of the Parisian brasserie market. To ensure the viability of its model, the restaurant also needs a stable staff, a rarity in the restaurant landscape that's short of manpower. So this morning, we're here to make the broth. What do you say? So broth is the signature dish of Bouillon Julienne. In the kitchen, Christophe has chosen to develop the loyalty of his new recruits, whom he hires very young. You actually have to crush the lemongrass. 19-year-old Kevin was offered a permanent contract when he arrived last August at minimum wage. He had just left school with no experience. Leaks in vinaigrette. Two pieces, okay? Just like this, all the same size. And when we take one like that, we take the piece and put it on top. That way we get two exactly alike, just like that, right? We'll have the exact same like this. We keep this piece. We take another tray next to it for the calf's head. I'm happy to be in a kitchen where we can do this kind of thing. There's action here, yes. And here you are well paid for your first salary. Yes, I've been about 11,148 euros this month. I'm good. Yes, it's fine. I live with my parents, so it's fine for now. But all I want is to have a job that I enjoy. Because if you don't like your job, there's no point in staying. You have no motivation if you don't like your job. That's good, Kevin. When you're working, what's important when you're doing big volumes like that is also to set yourself a rhythm. I'd rather take on a young person with no experience and train them in my own way than often take on a young person or older people with long CVs who think they're good but aren't and don't really want to work. I could see it in Kevin's eyes. In fact, he has no experience. He's got nothing. But what I see is motivation, and that's what interests me. All 34 employees have permanent contracts. Yassin has been working at the restaurant for three and a half years. He started out as a barman, then as a tray porter. Today, at the age of 22, he is already a waiter and head waiter. Every morning he spends 30 minutes polishing his shoes before his shift. Whether in a bouillon or a high-end brasserie, the most important thing is presentation. When customers enter a restaurant, the first thing they see is the decor and the waiters. Catering is in Yassine's blood. 
Since the age of 12, he's dreamed of doing what his father did. But his father didn't want this career for his son. Yasin took a scientific baccalaureate, which led him to an engineering school. His hopes were dashed and he got depression. During my burnout, I went to see my doctor because he had asked me to talk about it. I started to get a little lump in my throat and let out a few little tears. And I pounded my fist on the table in front of the doctor. And I said to my father, Listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. What I've always wanted to do is work in the restaurant business. The studies were for you, to please you, because I wanted you to see your son succeed in life, quite simply. From now on, I get up in the morning, I go to a restaurant, I go home, and the next day, I get up again and go to a restaurant. Yassine went on I don't to go complete to a BTS in hotel and catering in a co-op program. At 22, he's an ambitious young man. He'd see himself one day running 10 restaurants. As a waiter, he is paid 1,600 euros net, not including tips. 700 euros a month on average. Hello, everyone. Hi, Saud. How are you? Five o'clock. Time for duty. Good evening, everyone. First of all, congratulations on yesterday's work. Briefing from Sajit, the evening's maitre d', crucial to the smooth running of the evening. In the end, we ended up with a good score. So tonight we have fewer groups than yesterday. We've got lots of tables of two and four. In other words, there will be a lot more rotations. Anifa, you take row three. By the way, you did a great job yesterday on your row, and I expect the same from you tonight. Yasin, in front like yesterday, and Abdel, row five, good service. Thank you. On this Saturday, to know where the neighborhood's at and anticipate the number of customers, Sajid has his technique. He does the rounds of the theaters. The restaurant is located right next to the Grand Boulevards, the capital's main theater place. Hello, how are you? I noticed you have some posters up. Yeah, yeah. And what's the occupancy rate like these days? Well, it works well. We're back in business. People are happy to come back. Do you have people who sometimes ask for restaurants for a bit so they can have a quick dinner? We often get requests. Don't hesitate. I'll offer him a little glass of champagne, a little something. If you want to drop by afterwards, we're here. Shall we go for a drink? OK, OK, bye, ciao. Sajid's plan for the evening is to attract 10% more customers which means 40 extra covers. Hello, Therese. Hello, Elise. How are you? You work every day, don't you? I came by on Tuesday and you were here yesterday too, today. You work a lot, don't you? How is business going? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah? We're good. Well, don't hesitate. If you have a group, then people who are going to look for the restaurant. Don't hesitate. Tonight, I'm busy, but I can find seats. They're my friends. We have to keep in touch often. We get together after work, too, for a drink. It changes a lot. We're very business-minded. It's important. That's all there is to it. Thank you and goodbye. Two salmon, one sea bream, one broth. Nine o'clock, the kitchen is on fire. Two calves' heads, one broth, one bar. In a bouillon. It has to go even faster than elsewhere. Two cow's heads are called for. Meat garnish sauce, never more than three manipulations. Meanwhile, Yassine, the young waiter, is in the middle of a marathon. Yassine, table 10, I straightened it. You don't have to clear the table, you just have to put down the dessert menu. Very good. And the table here needs straightening too. Very good, sir, so, sir. He covers 15 kilometers per shift twice as much as a soccer player during a game. Yassine has his own technique for dribbling between the tables. When we have a few customers getting up to go to the toilet or to have a smoke, we inevitably bump into each other. And what do we do? We try to cross our legs to reduce the space. 
When there's one, it's fine. When there's 10, it's even better because you're having fun, hop, hop, hop. It's the same thing as if I had a soccer ball and I was bouncing around between blocks. In this grueling world that more and more young people are fleeing, Yasin is like a fish in water. How did it go? It went fine. Very good, very good. Will we see you again soon? Very soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. In France, I think the restaurant business has lost its value. Waiters used to be highly respected. It was a profession that was highly regarded. Today, perhaps a little less so. Some do it out of spite. It's hard work, physically and even mentally. It's a job where there's a lot of stress. We're pushed to go fast, especially in a bouillon, for example. But in the end, when you settle down at the end of the evening, it's really pleasant. That evening, the service will finish after midnight. Outside, the last customers linger. Before heading home, Yasin still has to set the tables for the next day. Each waiter makes his cash register. For Sajit, it's accounting time. That day, they had a good time. They tapped, as they say in brasserie jargon. So it's, 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 it's a beautiful day. We're about, we're in seven, 780 covers. Lunch and dinner. It's true that it's a very tiring day. Yeah, it is. It's going to be a good night. Yeah, too bad I've got the day off. Yes, it's... 780 covers. That's 15,600 euros in the day's takings. Sales in line with the establishment's average. Le Bouillon plans to hire eight more waiters and cooks by the end of the year. 